to do for us is good. Jesus, receive all glory. What you have done for us is good. Jesus, take all glory. All you have done for us is good. Father, receive all glory. What you have done for us is God of choosing, take all glory. All you have done for us is good. Daddy, receive all glory. What you have done for us is good. Ever living God, we thank you. We bless your name. We exalt you. We glorify your name for what you have done. Thank you for yesterday, O oh God. Thank you for the ministration. Thank you for the way you used our daddy yesterday. Thank you for the testimony we had today concerning all you did yesterday. Father, we knew today shall be greater. Father, you have prepared and planned for us today. Bring all to reality in Jesus' name. Father, as many that are still on their way coming, Lord, help everyone. Those that are being trapped now with the traffic or hold on, we ask you help everyone to meet up with this glorious God really in Jesus' name. Father, we take authority over every forces of darkness that may have come to spy our freedom. The God of my pastor, take over this program as it pleases you. So that in conclusion, your name alone shall be glorified in Jesus' name. I hand over my soul, spirit, body to you. Your power, your grace upon my geo has covered me. Use me to speak your mind. So that in conclusion, your name alone shall be glorified. I cover this gathering with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Choosing praise the Lord. Let's have our seat. Let's turn our Bible to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 14. I read from verse 6. Ezekiel chapter 14 from verse 6. Amen. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Repent and turn yourself from your idols, and turn away your face from all your abomination. Verse 7. For every one of the house of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourned in Israel, we separated himself from me, and set us up his idol in his heart, and put the stumpy block of his iniquity before his face, and come to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. I, the Lord, will answer him by myself, and I will set my face against that man, and I will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Let's turn our Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter 13. Let's read from verse 13. Matthew, chapter 13. Let's read from verse 13. Amen. Therefore speak I to them in parables. Because they see, see not, and hearing they hear, they hear not. Neither do they understand. Verse 14. And it then is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. We said, by hearing, ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is worse gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their ear eyes 
they have clothes, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should hear them. Let's turn to the book of Matthew chapter 15. But before we turn to Matthew 15, let's complete that passage of the Bible where we just read now. Let's read from verse 18 through to verse 22. Matthew chapter 13 where we read. Let's complete the place from verse 18 through to verse 22. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was so in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that receiveth receive the seed into stony places. The same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receive it. 21. Yet had he not root in himself, but do it, do it, do it for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he offended. 22 be the last verse. He also that receives seed among the tongues is he that heareth the word. And the care of this word and the deceitfulness of riches choke the world, and he become unfruitful. Let's now turn to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. I read from verse 17 through to verse 20. Matthew chapter 15, verse 17. Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mount goeth into the belly, and is cast out into the drought. But those things which proceed out of the mount come forth from the heart, and they defile a man. Verse 19. For out of the heart proceed evil, thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies, Verse 20, these are the things we defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Praise the Lord. We are looking on the topic this hour, the topic that says the greatest enemy of spiritual growth, the greatest enemies of spiritual growth. As a chosen youth, we should know we have enemies. As a child of God, born again, it should always be in your heart that there is enemies. And that enemy is the devil, demons, and their human agents. Besides, there are things they use to operate and attack our Christian's life as a youth which also constitute enemies. There are instruments they are always used to attack our life, attack our growth. As Christian youth, we are subject to growth physically. When you repented as a child of God, a youth, you need to be growing. You need not to stop because Whatever that has life has growth. You need not to just be stagnant. You need to be growing spiritually, physically, and otherwise. If a youth is not growing, it is a sign of problem. We say that something is wrong or something may be hindering the growth of that youth. When you see a youth is not growing, or you are born again, you are not growing, spiritually, physically, and otherwise, something is wrong somewhere. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Let's read from verse 13. We are saying that something wrong somewhere 
when you see a youth is not growing the way he supposed. Matthew chapter 13, verse 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see, see not, and hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand, verse 14, and it then is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. We said, by hearing, ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And see, ye shall see, and shall not perceive. Verse 15. For this people's heart is worse gross. And their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes. And hear with their ears. And should understand with their heart. And should be converted. And I should hear them. Pick up something from this place. You are hearing, but you are not understanding what you are hearing. Because the enemy has succeeded against that person, walking against the spiritual growth of that youth. Walking against the spiritual growth of that person. That is the reason they will hear, but they won't understand. Take for example, you may surprise to call somebody up here now as a youth. Who followed everything that happened here yesterday? It may surprise you. You call up that person and say, Brother, sister youth, can you just explain what you understood yesterday for the program? From beginning to the end of the program, it will surprise you that that person will not be able to say one thing he understood for yesterday's program. They are hearing, you are talking to them, they pay attention. But that word is not going through. They hear, but they understand not. That is exactly why our daddy in the law give us this message. That we should listen to this message. Those things that are hindering our spiritual growth. Also turn your Bible with me to the book of John chapter 10 verse 10. John chapter 10 verse 10. In most cases, it is enemy that is causing this havoc. John chapter 10, verse 10. Turn your Bible with me to the book of John. Chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to see, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. That is the purpose of Jesus coming. But you find out now that sometimes that purpose is not being actualized in your life because there is power fighting your spiritual growth. No wonder we must not give devil chance at all, at all. If you have been given the chance, please, after this program, the conclusion of this program today, after our daddy has prayed for us, you need to go home celebrating. Because this is the time you are be expecting in your life. But do not give devil chance at all, at all. If you are mistakenly giving chance before, what you need to do now in this program, make sure you settle it in your mind not to give chance anymore. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27. Ephesians 4 27 say, Never give place to the devil. Never you give the chance at all. Because any chance you give, they will use it against you and cause confusion in your life. If you also turn with me to the book of James, chapter 4, verse 7. James, chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That means, what do we understand from this place? Resist the devil simply means that Devil must come, whether you like it or not. You are a youth does not mean that devil will be fearing your youthful age. Not at all. It is even youth that face a lot of challenges, a lot of challenges from the devil. Most of these people you see sometimes, arm robbers outside there, these terrorists, check some of their age. Some of them, from 20 years, 30 years, just from 40 years down, hardly you see people with those terrorists sometimes that carry guns 
at the age of 70, 80. No. It is the youth. Young, young ones. Because they will knew very well their blood are still fresh. They can be used for any assignment. But thank God who have raised our daddy in the Lord in a time like this. In this generation where we are. Do you know it's a privilege for you finding yourself in the midst of the chosen youth? Is it a privilege? Do you count it as a privilege? That is the reason sometimes whenever I see the topic our GO do give to us, it gives me joy. When I saw this topic, the successful youth, I was very, very happy. I was challenged. I don't know whether you have spent your time. I find out what resourceful is all about. I really thank God for our daddy in the Lord. Let's continue our mercy. Remember, I am just talking to you on the aspect of the areas. Don't give chance to them. Remember the topic we are treating this moment, the greatest enemy of spiritual growth. And if you also turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 13, Matthew, Chapter 15, verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted. Oh, that is the reason why you are here in this program. So that before you leave this place, every plant, this great God of chosen, the God of Abraham and Jacob, the Almighty God has not planted in your life, shall be uprooted in Jesus' name. Can I hear that amen more louder? For better understanding, we shall consider this message under two points. One, the reasons and the enemies within explained. The reasons and the enemies within explained. Every youth who is a believer is expected to grow spiritually. But unfortunately, the reverse is the case. Many are not growing the way they should. Such youth may not know the root cause of his or her lack of growth, spiritually, physically, and otherwise. Those youth who are preaching the Simon of the Lord, those youth that are preaching, running this heavenly race, most of them are the victim of these snagnaces. They want to grow, but sometimes they are seeing a lot of challenges around them. A lot of things. Sometimes you find out that what you preach against, you see yourself doing them. Let's turn our Bible to the book of Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible says, My people are distraught for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no prince to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Lack of knowledge. That is the challenges we face sometimes. Remember also in John chapter 8 verse 32, you shall know the truth. The truth you knew shall make you free. By the grace of God, we have had all the truth we need to hear in this ministry. Our daddy has not hide anything from us. Am I right? He has not hide any truth from us. He has told us all the truth we need to know in this life. So if anybody is left behind, that person, you are the cause of your problems. The problem of such youth are enemies within. And the question now is this. What and who are these enemies? Because so many of us will be so interested. Preacher, you are talking about the greatest enemy of spiritual growth. And now you are telling us in the point, point number one, the reasons and the enemies within explain. And some of us now will be asking these questions. Preacher, what and who are these enemies of our growth? I want you to pay attention. Our enemies are the things that stand as idols in our life. Our enemies are those things that stand as idols in our lives. The things that occupy our heart, they are our enemies. Those things that fill our heart, 
even as we are talking to you now, you find out that somebody will be looking on you, will be looking to you eyeball to eyeball, but it's not hearing what you are saying. Because there is something that has covered that heart. There is something that is occupying that heart. Those are some of the things now we are going to mention in this point number one. The things that are hindering, occupying our heart. Occupy the understanding of the word of God not to penetrate. If you consider the place where we read before, I think we need to read it again. Matthew chapter 13. Let's read that place again. We read it before. Let's read it again. Matthew chapter 13. I want us to read from verse 13. Matthew chapter 13. I read from verse 13. Choosing praise the Lord. Therefore speak I to them in parable, because they see, see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. And it then is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. We said, by hearing, ye shall hear and shall not understand. And see, ye shall see and shall not perceive. Praise the Lord. Verse 15. For these people's heart is worse gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should hear them. Remember, it is what you hear that works in you. What you hear is have effect in your life. Because the Bible says faith comes hearing. I'm hearing true by the word of God. Those things you are hearing matters a lot in your life. But in the situation you are hearing, and you don't understand what you are hearing, how will those things have effect in you? Let's, con con let's continue on the place where we are reading. Let's continue from verse 18. Many people hear, but they did not understand because they are not giving attention to those things they are hearing. But I want you to give attention. Let's read from verse 18. See what do happen to such people. Verse 18. Matthew chapter 13 verse 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Verse 19. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, mark that place. Then come the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. I want you to mark that place in your Bible. We are still reading. Those people that when they hear the word, they were not interested. The enemy will come and snatch those works they have received from them. Now let's read verse 20. Praise the Lord. Verse 20, but he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receive it. 21, yet had he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation and persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Do you know every word of God you hear, there are power that will challenge that word in your life. There are power that will rise up to challenge, to know whether what you have received, you have a truth to practicalize it. Look at verse 22. Look at verse 22. Let's continue from 21. Yet had he not wrote in himself, but durate for a while, for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the war, by and by he is offended. 22. He also that receives seed among the tongues is he that heareth the word. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Not that the person did not receive it, but when he received it, he could not, the person did not allow the word. To dwell richly in you. Because you could not allow the world to dwell richly in you. When persecution rises up. It can be from the parents. It can be from your siblings. 
The persecution may come from the place of your work or in, in the higher institution where you are. Persecution may come in the place of work or in the place where you are working, where you serve. When the persecution come up, because this word did not root in you, then the Bible say, by and by, that is the place where we read now, by and by, the person will be offended. You will even see some of you sometimes, when that persecution come up, they started angry. Why do I even accept Jesus from the beginning? Why do I agree with what our daddy is preaching? Why do I agree with what my leader taught, taught me about? It's better I could have not accepted it at all at all. They will start regretting. Why do I accept Jesus? But I want you to understand, there are powers that are fighting you not to grow. That is why those things are coming up in your life. It could also be the idol of love of money. Remember, we are looking at what and who are those enemies in your life. It could be love of money. Because of love of money, that is the reason so today now you may surprise. So many of the youth today, Saturday, they are in their business places. They will tell you, ah, why should I go to church? I won't go today because if I go, the money I could have made today, I won't make it. It could be love of money. That is the enemy that is fighting your growth. It could be, ma it could be material things of this world. Or maybe you are into gambling. It could be as a result of gambling. When we mention something like this, now somebody can say, ah, pastor, what do you mean? Or preacher, what do you mean? You mean that somebody can still be coming to choosing and involving gambling? Yes, here now we can have newcomers. The challenge they have in their school, in their life, sometimes you can even use your shoe to gamble. Some of you use your school fees for gambling. I want you to understand that gambling has stand as a challenge, hindering your growth in your life. So turn away from me. What about those people? Home videos, home movies has become what is working against their spiritual growth. If you check some of you now, early this year you enter an agreement with God. Ah, God or choose it. Thank you for Umbidi Crusade. Thank you for the program. This year, I must be reading my Bible at least one chapter a day. But whenever you want to open that chapter, your eyes will flash on television. You say, ah, I love this program so much. Through that program, you could not cover. You will not be able to cover that scripture you are great with God for that day. Movies has taken the mind of so many of you away. And that has turned against some of you against your growth. It makes your growth now to diminish. You don't grow unlike before. You are not snagnas. Even some people now, they are even left the aspect of that area of snagnas. They are going down every day. They are just managing their spiritual life. So take note of these enemies of growth. It could be worldliness that is fighting your growth not to serve God the way you're supposed to serve God. If you look around now, you see the way some of you dress. It's very, very bad. They will tell you, preacher, what do you mean? Uh, we have heard what, we, we have heard the message in choosing, but I must do what I like. No, you can't decide for yourself. Worldliness is a taboo as far as this great ministry is concerned. So if you evolve in worldliness, it will hinder your growth. Spiritually, you won't grow. Physically, you won't grow. Because you have attached yourself to worldliness in this world. What about fashions or lust of the things of the world? Some of you, just what I said before, they started regretting. Some are even complaining. Why did my parents go and join the lost chosen? Why not my parents join other ministry? Other churches that they dress anyhow. I, I don't know why my father just go and join choosing. I don't know why my mother just joined choosing. I don't know why my brother, my siblings that I'm living with, they are choosing. Well, why not they join other churches that they can join in Jesus' name? So wherever you are, take note. Or maybe your case is pride. Pride has hindered your growth in life. 
If what you are going through now is as a result of pride, what you need to do is to do away with pride. What about disobedience? Unbelief? Compromise? Turn away from it. Because these are the enemies of growth. When you are living in pride, you will never grow spiritually. You will never grow even physically as child of God. So you need to turn away from pride. And if you are living in pride, who did you learn it from? Consider the case of our daddy in the Lord by the grace of God. How God has prepared him. Everything we need to learn is in him for us to learn from him. Check the humility. And by the grace of God, we are not here to preach human beings. We are preaching Christ, Jesus. But I want to tell you that physically, our master Jesus will not come to your house to tell you this is how I look like. People are looking on you to see the example of Christ in you. And that is an example of what we have seen in the life of our daddy. Take, for example, when our daddy saw Pastor Joshua yesterday ministering to us, by the grace of God, we also see the grace of God upon his life. He has taken the example. Why can't we learn? Some of you will say, ah, I preacher, you don't understand. And hey, now that is daddy's son now. That is why he decided to follow daddy's example. Do you know of us that are here now? If we obey the doctrine of this church, which is heavenly doctrine, all of us as children of our general overseer. Am I right? Anybody here that can confirm what I said? Is it true? If you agree with me, can you raise your hand up? If you agree. If we live a good life, a genuine life, all of us automatically, our daddy in the law is our spiritual father. Am I right? Our mommy in the law is our spiritual mother. So I want you to understand, as we follow the example, pride will not live in us. Do away with pride. No youth that involve in pride that grow in life. Devil will always use that pride to fight against you. Do you know the reasons? Some of those youths, some of those people you see around, I want you to understand that some of them, they will come up. If there are things you could have learned in their life, you won't be able to learn it because of pride in life. So take note of all these things, and the Lord will continue to bless you more and more in Jesus' name. Selfishness is another key that the devil can use to hinder a youth growth. What about life of immorality, immoral thoughts? What about those wickedness that are going on in the world today, complaining, murmuring, rebellious, excuses? You give a lot of excuses why you will not come to the program or why you will not evolve fully in the things of the law. Whenever these things and many other things occupy your heart, their father, the devil, will now come and take full control of that person's life. My prayers and the, join the faith with the prayer of our daddy praying for us. I'm telling you that after this program, those things that hinder your growth will disappear and vanish away in your life in Jesus' name. Remember that John 10, 10, according to where we read before, Satan come to see, to kill, and to do what? To destroy. And in the book of 1 Peter chapter 8, verse 8, the devil, our adversary, rolling around looking for who he may devour. So don't give chance at all, at all. According to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. And as you key into this message, the Lord will continue to bless you, take away those hindrances of growth in your life in Jesus' name. Let's see point number two. Our expected response, warning, and the danger. For any youth to grow spiritually or otherwise, such a youth must put away all these idols, empty himself or herself. Whatever you knew that the devil will use to hinder you, do away with them. Those things that constituted idols, do away with them. Those sinful lies. Those things that the devil are using to block the channel of receiving growth in your life. Do away with all of them. Take your mind away from them. Throw your Bible with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's see that place. Those things you know, devil will use as an instrument to hinder you. Turn away from them so that you will grow 
by the grace of God and move ahead more and more in Jesus' name. Turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I read verse 6. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little level leveled the whole law. Verse 7. Purge out therefore the old levy that ye may be a new law as ye are unlived. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Verse 8. Therefore let us keep the feasts, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleaved bread of sincerity and truth. What the Lord needs from us is after this program, let people see you and say of a truth. You are a choosing indeed. Let those sincerity be found in your life. And as you continue to live a good life that pleases God, all these things that hinder growth will run far away from your life in Jesus' name. We should be mindful of the things that occupy our heart in order to give way to growth spiritually and otherwise. You must be truly converted and put on childlike life. Remember in the book of Matthew chapter 18, you can write it down from verse 1 to 3. When the disciples came to Jesus Christ, they were asking who will be the greatest in the kingdom of God. Jesus, our master, used a little church as an example to say them that you must live Christ-like life, like these children. That is how your life will live. I want you to understand, living a Christ-like life or a little child life, you must have the mind of forgiveness. You must have the mind of overlooking things and move ahead. A little baby lie. Let me just give you a brief example because of my time. Now, you understand that if a child, a mother is going out, a child will ask the mother, Mom, when you are coming, buy me biscuits. That child is not careful, he's not interested whether the money, whether the mother go out returning with wounds. Even if that woman, uh, as a mother, you are returning home with a lot of wounds, with blows on your face. What the child needs is biscuits. Do you know immediately you come to the house, the child will open hand. Mommy, where is my biscuits? Whether your eyes is with blood or as you wear strongly to get that biscuit for that child, that child does not care. It is when you give that child that biscuit, before the child will look at you and say, Mom, what happened to your face? That is the kind of mind God wants us to have. A little child mind. When we receive the word of God, receive it like a child. When you ask, believe it as a child. And as we have this mind, I am assuring you, as our daddy coming today to conclude this program, oh, you will be a resourceful youth indeed in Jesus' name. Any of you saying the ladder, amen, is going home with the largest miracles. So take note. What this great God of choosing has prepared for us must surely come to pass in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, as this message, we are coming to conclusion of this message, I want you to understand any youth who is always quick to speak, to teach, or you are not interested to learn, you feel you know it all, brother know all, sister know all, be very careful. If you are living that kind of life, you won't know anything. Just take for example, do you know that the day your miracle started with this program is the very first day you heard about the announcement of this topic? The day you heard the announcement, the resuccessful youth, that was the day your miracle started, if you understand what it means. Sometimes, I, I really thank God for our dad in the Lord, the way Holy Spirit instructed him on these topics. But do you know that if you are a youth that is not ready to learn, you can see this kind of topic and say, why did our daddy not take this one? Why did our geo not take this one? So you are not the one that is not the general overseer of the church. You have to be key to whatever our daddy asks us to do. You must do it. As the Holy Spirit instructed him, we must obey it. And as we obey, I'm telling you, you will be a successful youth indeed in Jesus' name. I want you to understand the best way is to humble yourself for God's glory. And take whatever you have received in this place. 
Because any person that is always making argument will not gain anything. Open your heart for today. Remember yesterday has gone. It will come again. This is the opportunity you have. And if you are missed out yesterday, never you allow yourself to miss today. Prepare your mind very well. Don't be among those youth that are attending this program yearly, but they can't get anything. I pray it shall never be your portion. That after this year, this great God of choosing will take you to a higher level. Remember, our daddy have assured us and told us that after this program, you will be teaching your lecturers. I, I didn't hear a better amen to that. First class shall be your portion in Jesus' name. The danger of feeling that I have arrived is that the devil will take over and occupy the heart. You become proud. When you feel that you have arrived, devil will begin to use those things against your life. But as you have listened to this message, this very hour, I want you to always have the mind of a little child. So that as you attend this program, this great God of choosing, we continue to bless you mightily in Jesus. Day. Remember, many of us have been asking a lot of questions, asking God a lot of questions. And tell, asking, telling God the chosen, hey, what does it mean by resourceful? I want you to know that resourceful means having ability to find quick and a clever way to overcome difficulties. And that is the reason God brought you to this program. How can you be resourceful in life? Put work into your relationship. Arm yourself with knowledge. Be honest about your weakness. Focus on the getting things done. Don't take shortcuts. Follow the right way. Optimize your system. You have to optimize, optimize, or uh, optimize your system. What you are doing. Be realistic. Always stand on the truth. And as you do, the Lord will continue to bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Bow down your head now as we go to God in prayers. Bow down your head. Pray this message in. Take the Lord. Whatever hinder growth, take it away in my life. I have listened to your word. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We are grateful unto you. You are God of choosing God who never lied. The God of my pastor, the living God. You are the excellency of Jacob. You are the backbone of the youth. Father, defend these ones. As your word has come forth, O Lord, I pray. Let your word, O Lord, Father, walk in the life of everyone. Make us that you want us to be in Jesus' name. I cover every one of you with the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Sit back down your head. Start thanking God for what God has done.